Hello viewers, we are Moifasas Academy students in Form 2. And this on the number right is? I'm John Kita. And I'm Derry Benyang. Welcome to your favorite program on Elimu TV. This is the Science Hub. And today we have prepared for you a lesson in Physics Form 2. The first topic, Magnetism. I know you might be wondering, what is a magnet? So, a magnet, this is a metal bar that attracts magnetic materials, or rather, this is a substance that produces magnetic field. For, uh, uh, for example, our friend Spencer is going to demonstrate how a magnet can attract magnetic materials. Yes, talking about materials, we have different types of materials which are attracted by a magnet. First, we have the non-magnetic materials on which my colleague Dara is going to expand more on that. The non-magnetic materials. These are, are materials that can never be attracted by a magnet. And examples include plastic wood, rubber, etc. And you might also be, we also have the magnetic materials, which Kita is going to explain more about. So, thank you my colleagues. These are materials that can be attracted by a magnet. For example, we have the iron, the nickel, the cobalt, and the alloys. Expounding on what Kita has said, we also have the ferromagnetic materials, which are materials that are strongly attracted by a magnet. We also have the paramagnetic materials, which are materials that are slightly attracted by a magnet. And also, we shall also get to learn about the types of magnets that we have, which we shall be demonstrated by my colleague Darren. I saw, I saw I've learned that there are different types of magnets. And the first one, this one is the horseshoe magnet. And its shape resembles that of a horseshoe. Horseshoe magnet, this is the U-shaped magnet. And this is the bar magnet. You might also be wondering, which is, this one is also the ceramic magnet and it has its poles on the different sides. We also have the soft, soft, the soft iron core magnet. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we all we sh we also have the bar magnet, which my colleague Darren hasn't mentioned. It's it's a bar magnet. It has the north pole and the south pole, which shall get to learn more about them. And uh, also to add on the magnetic materials, which I think you have uh, left out, huh. we also have the diamagnetic materials. So diamagnetic dia materials. These are materials that are slightly repelled by a magnet. For example, we have the diamond. Yeah. Huh. Huh. On magnetism, you shall also be expected to know more about the properties of a magnet. We have two properties of a magnet. We have the magnetic poles and the directional property, which shall be explained by my colleagues. In, when, we are, when we are talking about the magnetic poles, we are told that a magnet has two ends, and one of the ends must be the north pole and the south pole. Even if you look here, the, this end is the north pole and this end is the south pole. So it symbolizes that a magnet must have two poles, the north pole and the south pole. And also to add on the to add on the magnet the bar magnet, he has said that the ends this is where the poles are located. So to mean that the force of attraction or re re repulsion is more concentrated on the on the poles of the bar magnet. Yeah. And yeah. so can we, can we also say that this one the ends the force of repulsion and attraction are stronger in the ends than in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Demonstrating that in a bar magnet, we have the strong, the strongest force on the poles, on the side, the north pole and the south pole. We can also use, demonstrate using the iron filings. And as soon as doing that, well, I thought we are in the same line. So, you shall get to see that the North Pole will get to attract the iron filings. And you see that the magnet tends to attract the iron filings depending on the strength of its field. That is the North Pole. You shall also get 
to see the south pole attracting other magnetic ion filings yeah. that's how it's demonstrated thank you. And on the directional property, we are told that when a bar magnet is suspended loosely on a string it, and allowed to rest, it rests pointing a, a certain fixed direction. And we are told that the north pole of the bar magnet rests towards the south pole of the Earth's magnetic field. That's why if we suspend a magnet. So, as he prepares to demonstrate to you, he has said that the properties, the properties of properties of magnet, whereby we have said that they are we have two fundamental properties of magnet. One of them is the magnetic dipoles. The yeah. magnetic the magnetic uh, magnetic poles. Yeah. Magnetic. Or they also have the directional property. Yeah, the directional property. Going so back, my my colleague before we go to, to the demonstration, okay. my colleague Daryl has has uh, explained on on the directional property. However, he has said when you suspend a bar magnet. When you suspend a bar magnet and you allow it to come to a rest, it will come to a rest with with the with its poles or the ends pointing to a certain direction of the earth magnetic field, as is going to demonstrate. Yes, I think everybody is able to see that if I suspend this magnet, leave it to rest, it will point to a certain fixed direction. And the direction depends on the direction of the earth magnetic field. So, with time, the bar magnet will come to a rest with uh, with with its poles. One of the one of the poles will be pointing to a certain direction. If it comes to a rest with the, its north pole pointing to to the the north pole will come to rest pointing to the south south pole of the earth magnetic uh, field line, and the south pole will come to rest with the, its uh, pole pointing to the North pole of the earth magnet field. Yeah. And yes. finally, you'll get to see that the south pole has faced on the south, is tending to face on the south pole of the earth magnetic field. And you'll get that the north pole is tending to face on the northern pole of the earth's magnetic field. Yeah. Yeah. And in magnetism, you shall also get to know the basic law of magnetism. It says, it says that unlike poles attract while like poles repel, which shall be also demonstrated by using the bar magnets. So we can we can use the the less strong one. And as my colleagues are doing that, I hope you have understood what is a magnet, the magnetic materials the ty different types of magnets and the properties of magnets. And to add on that, I think you've also understood the basic law of magnetism, which to emphasize, it says that like poles repel while unlike poles attract. This means that if I, track, I attract the north pole, the north pole of a bar magnet to the south pole of another magnet, it means that there are different poles, so they will attract. Yeah. And if I put the north pole of a bar magnet to the north pole on another bar magnet, some forces, some repulsion forces will be felt. This is when the bar, the magnets tend to move away from each other. That's what is called repulsion. And when the magnets tend to come close to each other, we call it attraction. And to add on the rules that, on the characteristics of a magnet, we also have another non-fundamental uh, characteristic. First, I thought that I think you that you have understood the directional property and the magnetic poles. We also have the attraction property, whereby a magnet attracts other magnetic materials. Yeah. yeah. So we had already demonstrated on uh, where a magnet attracts other magnetic materials. Okay. So we are going to demonstrate the the basic law of the 
magnetism. magnet or magnetism. Yeah. So, as my colleagues uh, have said, that when you bring or or uh, you put two 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 unlike unlike poles of a magnet, when when you put them close to one another, they tend to they tend to attract. Yeah. They attract. Yes. So it means when you bring a north pole to a south pole, they are going to attract. Yes. Since yes. they are different, they are different, different poles. Poles. Yeah. Yeah. poles. They are different poles. Yeah. And then on the other hand. yeah, on the other hand, when you bring two like poles, they tend to repel, right? Yes. Yeah, they repel. As I'm going to demonstrate. So, on bringing two like like poles close to one another, they they repel. As you can see, they are repelling. Repel. Yeah. yeah. And so, also repelling. If you want to know that a magnet is repelling another magnet, it means that there are some forces that are trying to push them away from each other. And attraction is shown by when magnets try to come close to each other, as you have seen. For further no, for further understanding. We, I shall have drawn uh, ma two, ma two ma bar magnets to demonstrate what my colleague John Peter has been saying. He has said that when two poles of a magnet that are unlike the North Pole and the South Pole are brought close together, you'll find that the North Pole tends to be attracted to the South Pole. But when you bring the when you bring light poles together, light poles that's a South it might either be a South Pole and a South Pole. Or a north pole and a north pole, you tend you tend to get that the 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 fields the fields of forces will tend to repel each other. Yeah. Next, we are going to talk about the magnetic field lines. In the magnetic field lines, you should get to know the definition of the magnetic field field lines and the magnetic field itself. So, Darren, what's a magnetic field? According to my point of view, magnetic field, this is an area or space or region around the magnet whereby the, the forces, the attractive forces and the magnetic effect is felt. My colleague John Kita, what are magnetic field lines? So, magnetic field lines, these are uh, lines of forces that are used to, repre to represent magnetic fields. Okay, we shall also get to know more about the characteristics of these magnetic fields. Yeah. We have the three main characteristics of this magnetic field. One of them being that the magnetic field tends to move from the North Pole to the South Pole. As I, my drawing has indicated, the, the magnetic field lines tend to move from the North Pole to the South Pole, as the arrows have signified. Yes. And also to use a chart or a diagram, it is clearly indicated that the magnetic strength moves or the magnetic field moves from the north pole going towards the south pole. So it means that whenever you are drawing any diagram concerning magnets, magnetic field, you must take the point that the magnetic force radiates from the north pole or radiates from the north pole going towards the south pole. Yeah. If the point is taken home. So <coughs> we also we, we, we've got a different uh, magnetic field patterns for example we can uh, we can have uh, magnetic field patterns for for a u shaped magnet whereby the whereby the field lines will come out like uh, I'm going to demonstrate and as he is doing that we have as I had told you earlier we have different types of magnets. So even if it's a U-shaped magnet, the characteristics of magnets are told that it has different poles on its sides. So even if it's a U-shaped magnet, one end must be a north pole, while the end, another end must be a south pole. So it means that there are also some forces that is acting between the north pole and the south pole. And this can be represented by feed lines, as my colleague John Kita is drawing. In this, you, shall, you should also get to know the difference between a horseshoe magnet and a U-shaped magnet. You'll find that a U-shaped magnet has its poles slightly apart from each other, but the horseshoe magnet tend to have the poles 
close to each other. And also to add on that, we also have other different types of magnets here. We have this one. This is known as a ceramic magnet. And the ceramic magnet has its poles on the other side, on both sides. It is different from a bar ma magnet in that the poles of a bar magnet are on these ends, while the poles of a ceramic magnet are on these ends, the larger surfaces. The faces. Yeah. yeah. So, as I, I had said that uh, we've got uh, different uh, types of magnetic uh, pattern. This is one of them well, when, when you are using a U-shaped magnet. So, the magnetic field lines will tend to come from the, from the north pole to the, the south. south pole. And uh, to, to add on, uh, on the properties of my magnetic field lines, the magnetic field lines are uh, represented using arrow whereby they show where the magnetic field line is coming from. Or in, a, or, or in case in our diagram, we can see that the magnetic field line is coming from North or south. This is indicated by the show of the arrow. So this is one of the pattern when you are using a U-shaped magnet. We've got uh, we've got uh, other magnetic field patterns uh, like for uh, horseshoe, the bar magnet, yeah, and, yeah. The lights. and many and also, and also to add, you are, you, are, you should always know that even if you are given a magnet which is half a big rod. Yeah. For example, and it is the south pole. Yeah. You, you need to know that the S first it represents the south pole. Yeah. So it means that the feed lines are coming into it. Into it. Yes. Yeah. So it means that you should know that the north pole is the one that radiates the magnetic effect. So it means that the magnetic effect is radiated from the north pole going towards the south pole. Yeah. So the use of north pole is to radiate and the use of south pole is to receive. So, talking about the field lines, we have already learned about the field line. We have the field, field patterns around the bar magnet. We also have the field patterns, as my colleague Kita has shown here, we have the field patterns around the U-shaped magnets. We also have field patterns around different magnets, which we shall get to learn later about them. Yes, but okay. before we go into that, yeah. you might be wondering, what are these lines for? Okay. If you had not understood earlier, these lines represent the magnetic fields. And the magnetic fields, they are used to show where the magnetic effect is radiating from. For you to understand this, you must use arrows. The arrows are used to point to the direction, where they are coming from and where they are going to. So it means that if I draw this thing, this diagram, without indicating the arrows, it means that it will be true. It's not going to be magnetic field lines. Okay, we also should get to know about magnetic shielding. This refers to the process in which but the magnetic field lines are restricted from entering into certain regions. They are restricted from entering into certain regions. We, we shall demonstrate it by using these few charts that you have drawn. We have the, the, these two magnets which we shall use the soft iron, iron rod and a ring. So in the soft iron rod, you will find that the soft iron in the, the soft iron restricts the field magnetic patterns. The magnetic part, field patterns from the magnet tends to be concentrated into the soft iron rod and they tend to come out. This means that they have been restricted from entering into certain regions. We also have the soft iron ring which also restricts magnetic forces from entering into certain region. This region is region P. You, should, you, you will find that the magnetic field forces from the North Pole will tend to pass across the region P and go to the South Pole. And this is yeah. the soft iron ring that we are talking about. It is cyclic in shape such that it has a free point here. So when a, a magnet is put inside here, we are told that it concentrates it along its along its ends, yeah. such that the point P, which is the center of the soft iron ring, will not express any magnet, will not experience any magnetic yeah. strength. So before we go any further, uh, there is something that we had left. This mm. was this was the magnetic field patterns for unlike swords. 
Yeah. yeah, this was magnetic field patterns for a light yeah. poles. So we also have got uh, magnetic field lines for for light, light poles. Yeah. Whereby the field lines will tend to repel yeah. each other yeah. as well as I'm going to demonstrate it. And this as he is going to demonstrate it, you should know that when you are drawing field lines, they should never cross each other. When you are drawing field lines, they should never cross each other. And this as he is drawing, you can see this by this of a diagram. In, in, in all of the diagrams, there's nowhere where the field lines are crossing at each other. So that's one of also of the characteristics of the field lines. Yeah. Talking of the characteristics, we have many characteristics of field lines which we shall get to learn about in a few minutes to come. So the magnetic field lines will tend to repel each other. So as, as, as I'm indicating. And we have said that, we have said that uh, in one of the properties of magnetic field lines, we have said that the, the magnetic field lines originates from the North Pole to the South Pole. Yes. So, in our case, we are going to indicate that the field, the, the force of the magnet is coming to the South, the South Pole. Pole. So, the, our arrows will be like this. So, in our, we are uh, this is a case where we have used two light poles, whereby the magnetic field lines are going to repel each other, giving us this, this certain uh, uh, pattern, which at the center we have a uh, point. So, at, at this uh, point, we call this point a neutral point. A neutral point is a point where the total resultant the magnetic field is zero. So this is a, this is X, which is the neutral. And also to, to add on that, it means that the neutral point is a point whereby no magnetic effect is felt. So even if you put here a magnetic material, it will not be attracted. Neither will it be repelled because here the result, total resultant magnetic force is zero. It means that there is no any magnetic influence here. Yeah, talking of magnetic fields, we shall finalize with the characteristics of magnetic fields. So, we have four characteristics of magnetic field patterns. One of them is that they do not cross across, they do not pass or cross each other. across each other. Yeah. So, as my daughter, as my colleague said here, the field patterns should not be found crossing, uh, yeah. crossing each other. Yeah, we also have the second um, characteristic, which my colleague Darrell shall go. And also, the obvious characteristic is that field patterns they originate or come from the North Pole towards the South Pole. To, uh, to expand on what my colleague has also said, that they never cross at each other. So when you are drawing, you should confer to that. So to add on that, uh, we also have another uh, property or character, characteristic of ma magnetic field lines, whereby it, is, it is states that, it is states that uh, the magnetic field lines are close to, to each other where the magnetic force is strong yes. and they are parallel where the magnetic uh, are uniform. Yeah, where the magnetic field is uniform and they are far from each other. As in, they are far, their distance is, is a, a little bit uh, far. Yeah, far from each other, where the magnetic force is weak. weak. Yeah. Okay. I can also expand on that. I think I should use a diagram. If in case the magnetic field is on that, almost parallel, yeah. it means that the, the magnetic field is uniform. Yeah. And if it's close to each other, yeah. strong. It means that the field is strong. strong. Yes. And remember to use other to show that the magnetic field lines are moving from the north to the south. Uh -huh. And if they are almost far apart, if they are almost far apart as in this one, 
it means that the magnetic field is weak. So you need to know that also. Okay, thank you for watching Elimu TV. This is your program, the Sansab, where you get to watch and learn. Thank you.